This park is just gorgeous. I feel like I'm walking through the Garden of Eden in some way. Look at the sun going through the trees. There's smoke coming out of my mouth. There's fog. It's just beautiful. It's a really beautiful morning and it's such a gorgeous park. Here we are in Brussels, Belgium, and I'm in one of my favorite locations. It's called Le Pavillon Chinois, and there's also La Tour Japonaise. Basically, it's the Chinese pavilion, and there's also a Japanese tower. And this park is one of the most exquisite and most beautiful parks in the area. Unfortunately, it's a little bit under construction, and uh, yeah, so not everything is as pretty as I wanted it to be, but let's explore the chinese pavilion the japanese tower and its surrounding park are situated in the lacan area of brussels and are part of the royal museums of art and history of brussels these structures are the location for various museums of the extreme orient this is kind of one of the sad things that has been happening because of all these pandemics is that um, as you can tell this building is under construction it is beautiful still from the outside but i think a lot of people were breaking the windows and they were looting it and doing a lot of things that they shouldn't have to the building. And I think that the city just got tired of all that and they put a gate around it. They boarded up all the windows and stuff. It's a pity because it is beautiful and I'm really hoping that once the pandemic stop, um, it'll go back to normal. These unorthodox buildings were created during the reign of King Leopold II due to his fascination with Asia. He actually had plans of making a huge avenue in Lacken filled with monuments representing different exotic styles, but this project was eventually abandoned. I've been coming to this park since I was a kid, and I never noticed that every stone has kanji characters. I can't read them. I think it's fascinating and I'm so surprised that I never noticed it. I guess that once you're filming vlogs, you notice things that you would have never seen otherwise. If you look around everywhere in the park, there are numerous sculptures and paintings representing dragons. For China, these Chinese dragons are powerful and benevolent symbols with supposed control over watery phenomenon. Look at this structure right behind me. Everything is beautifully painted and carved. The wood is gorgeous. I'd love to just hang out in the middle of it, drink a tea and just enjoy the beautiful weather. Okay, looking at the Pavillon Chinois, I have to admit that this building is very nostalgic to me because back in 2004, before YouTube and all the craze of people making their own short films and stuff, I actually asked permission to the park and the city of Brussels if I could shoot a movie here and they said sure here you go here's the permission they just gave me an email and for the whole summer of 2004 we filmed a martial art epic movie right here in the park and many fight sequences from that movie happened right here in front of this building and the surrounding areas so it's it's, it's really really close to my heart. The Chinese pavilion was originally built under Leopold II because it was meant to become a luxury restaurant. This never actually happened. The interior decorations of the building as well as the gazebo in front of it were actually commissioned in Shanghai in order to be as authentic as possible. In the movie Rumble Scroll that I shot a couple of years ago, these are the same steps where my master stops me because I'm his right hand from taking revenge on the person that killed his wife. <laughs> really great memories. Doesn't mean a lot to other people, but it's cool that they're still there. The two buildings became state property in 1921 and for many years held collections of decorative porcelain, which had been created for the exportation from Japan to Europe in the middle of the 17th and 18th century and from China from the second half of the 19th and 20th century. Back in 2004, when I filmed my film Rumble Scroll in this park, uh, a lot of people would come here to get their wedding pictures done. So since we were uh, dressed like samurais and ninjas and uh, it just looked cool. Uh, a lot of the couples would ask us if we would want to pose with them. So I have a lot of footage from, uh, from back in the day where I'm posing with uh, random couples uh, for their wedding pictures. I guess I looked authentic or cool. <laughs> the winters in Belgium can be somewhat cold, but on extremely sunny days, the temperature is often surprisingly low. Again, walking in a background that looks kind of like a green screen, but I can assure you it's really real. It's beautiful. This is kind of the nature and how it looks in the winter in a northern country. All the leaves are gone. Of course, in California where I'm staying at, it's 
similar too that the leaves fall but it is cold so you can definitely tell that it's winter i love it it's amazing to think that in a couple of months they'll start blooming again and become full of leaves and flowers there's true beauty in winter as well as spring and all of the other seasons of the year <sighs> you see when i did my movie rumble scroll i did this move where i did the splits on the pole it's been 16 years and i guess i can still do it look at this guy isn't he cute when i walk through this place i can kind of imagine that he's maybe one of the masters or one of the old sovereigns of this place and he's overlooking the whole park for us if you go a little bit deeper into the park you'll find some stairs and at the bottom of them there's the Museum of Japanese Art, which was inaugurated on March 2006. This would have been the entrance to the Japanese Art Museum. But as I mentioned, it is fenced up at the moment, but it was recently renewed. So there is hope that once the pandemic ends and all that, that everything will open up again. I really hope so. The collections that are featured in this building are centered on the Edo period, which lasted from 1600 to 1869. This is an epic location for my movie Rumble Scroll. This is actually a very key scene in the film where I talk to my disciples and I tell them that they shouldn't let themselves get beat up, that they should be better fighters. And lo and behold, as soon as I finish my speech and go away, the main bad guy of the movie shows up and beats them up, stealing the scroll with him. Now, I must say, I really love what they did to the rooftops. It looks so authentic. I can almost imagine ninjas like running on top of it, just like in a movie. I guess when I look at these scenes, I just think of movies, but hey, I'm a movie geek. What do you want? Walking through the park, I am often mesmerized with how much detail was put into the construction of these buildings. Pretty much every arch, pillar, and stone has so much detail throughout. This is behind me, one of the walls that we used in the movie Rumble Scroll, where the ninjas are actually climbing over it in order to take over the kingdom. Can I do it again? Let's try. Also on the subject of Rumble Scroll, during those times, not too many people were filming low budget films. Since we had pretty fun costumes, many tourists would often ask us to go and pose with them. We happily obliged as it was pretty fun to get a bit of exposure and also make people smile. So here's another anecdote from my movie Rumble Scroll. So while we were shooting it, we were dressed like ninjas and we were doing all these fight scenes and stuff. And there was a little place here for children to play. And uh, a couple of the moms came to us and said, hey guys, you guys look like good people. Would you mind coming to uh, scare our kids dressed up like ninjas? And we said, we were very naive at the time, we said, okay, sure, why not? So we accepted and we stormed into this uh, playground and uh, a bunch of the kids were laughing, they, they were enjoying it, but the other half was crying, so we quickly stopped. So yeah, uh, we had the best intentions to, uh, to uh, make their, the day to the kids, make them happy and stuff like that, but it didn't go quite as planned. Being in this area, I can't forget to actually speak about the park itself. The Chinese pavilion, the park for being a beautiful area that you can go and visit just to look at the buildings, it is actually a park where there's a lot of really great nature and it is a little bit close to cars, so it could be a little bit noisy, but still you are able to get that fresh air and look at the beautiful trees and uh, just uh, enjoy life in some way. During the Universal Exposition held in Paris in 1900, King Leopold II became fascinated by a Japanese tower built by architect Alexandre Marcel. After seeing it, he commissioned the same architect to build a replica of that tower in Laken. This is actually the old ticketing area for the Japanese tower. It was closed in 2013 uh, because uh, they felt that the building was unsafe, but it used to be a museum and it used to have a bunch of Japanese things in it. And uh, it was really beautiful to go. And in the past, you could actually go into the tower and look up. But uh, yeah, the, the structure was deemed to be unfit. So they did close it. And I really do hope that one day they do renovate it. Building starting in 1901 was completed in 1904. 
The tower doesn't conform to traditional Japanese Buddhism, as the building has six floors compared to five floors found in traditional Japanese towers. No screws were used in order to build the tower to conform to traditional Japanese building techniques. Behind me is the Japanese tower. Isn't it beautiful? It's been closed since 2013. As I mentioned, they did close the museum inside because they feel that this building is unsafe. But at least it's still here and we can still look at it. And I really hope that one day they're going to renovate it because it's really worth it. As a cool bonus, if you're willing to go a little bit further than the park, there is a tram station called the Wand, which has its whole tram station decorated with graffiti art. And if you're at all into that kind of art, I really recommend going to visit it because it's really well worth it. The tram station the Wand has a very befitting name as it translates to the wall. And being so heavily decorated with street art makes it such a beautiful place to visit if you're ever going through Laken. The Japanese influence is definitely not just limited to the Japanese tower. Even the graffiti kind of looks manga-like and I can tell that people here really love their anime. Okay, well I'm outside of the park and as a final, final little bonus, this is actually my childhood home, the place where I lived as a little kid. In this apartment right here. I lived here from when I was zero years old to around five years old and there's just a lot of memories right here. It's right next to the Japanese tower and the Chinese pavilion so I thought this would be a great place to end the video. Please be sure to subscribe and hit the like button. Also leave me a comment too. Let me know if you enjoyed this video and if you would like me to visit some other places in Brussels. As you can tell I'm not scared to travel and I'd be glad to make a video about it. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.